a digital companion for older adults. Welcome back to Textonation. I'm Fred Fishkin, and joining us from Intuition Robotics is CEO and co-founder Dor Schooler. Thank you for joining us, Dor. Thanks for having me. Give us a little background to start with before we talk about your, your really fascinating product that you have out there. Some background about Intuition Robotics. Sure, Intuition Robotics is a startup company. We're about five and a half years old, based in Israel with uh, offices in, across the United States. We are venture-backed. We're a team of about 100 people. And our mission is to help older adults um, <clears throat> live happier, healthier lives at home. And you're doing this with a product that you call LEQ, E-L-L-I-Q. So tell us what LEQ is and, and, and the capabilities today and, and going forward, what you're looking at. Sure. LEQ is basically a empathetic digital companion that lives with older adults and help them be happier, healthier, and more independent at home. It kind of looks like a lamp with a screen that comes to life, uh, beautifully designed, we believe, not to screen technology, but to kind of blend into the older adult's home. She's extremely simple to use and is one of the first products out there, if not the first one, which is proactive, meaning the older adult doesn't need to remember to approach her and give a command. Rather, LEQ will proactively initiate the interactions and just start talking to them. Um, it, LEQ projects a lot of empathy and creates discussions around their day-to-day, -day, how they're feeling, how they're sleeping, what they're planning for today. She'll remember those conversations and reference them back in, in additional ones and schedule other opportunities to interact throughout the day. With that core, she then provides value around connectivity with the family, around health and wellness, um, things like sports and mindfulness and nutrition and hydration support. Um, and helps um, with services to help them stay independent at home. What kinds of services? Some of the services could be getting a ride or getting uh, grocery delivered to, home, to their home or food delivered to their home. And we're working on additional services um, that we're exploring today, like handyman services to make sure that their home is safe. Hi, Walter. Would you like to hear something interesting? Yeah. Sure, why not? There are only 18 minutes of total action in an average baseball game. Betcha didn't know that, right? I did not know that. How about a quick trivia question about sports? Okay, go ahead, shoot. How many home runs did Babe Ruth hit in 1927? Was it A, 51, B, 60, C, 74? What is your answer? B, 60. Well done. And that broke his record, because in 1921, he hit 59. And that was only a little while after the launch of the Red Sox. Tell us about the, the technology that's gone into this and the inspiration behind it, too. Sure. So the technology is really cutting edge in multiple areas. Um, firstly, there's the interaction aspect. Maybe that's more design than technology. LEQ uses body language as a form of interaction. As humans, we're geared to respond to moving objects. If, if I look at you, Fred, you will notice that and look back at me. LEQ essentially has multiple degrees of freedom. So she'll look at the user when they enter the room and invite them to engage, even through nonverbal communication. She, when there's interesting content on the screen, she'll look at the screen together with the older adult and basically use um, cues that we all know from, from our day-to-day -day interactions and kind of mimic them in a certain way to provide nonverbal communication, which really, really helps us with interaction. As far as the hardcore technology, Almost all of it is on the software side. We have over 30 patents filed in the company, and it's mainly around goal decision-making and being proactive. It starts with LEQ asking herself, is this a good time to be proactive? Is there a high probability that the user will accept or will I annoy them right now? And if so, which activity should I promote for my bank of different activities? The way it works behind the scenes is each activity is assigned to a goal. And there's a quota 
on basically how much how many activities per week we want per goal. So how often do we want to do mindfulness or physical exercise or tell jokes or teach new things or what have you. And basically LEQ's AI calculates which of these activities is most important to promote right now and which has the highest chances of success with this individual right now. And then it asks itself, well, how should I say it? If I want to um, wish you good morning, how should I say it today as opposed to any other day, given what happened yesterday, given the time of day I see you, given the weather outside, given our previous interactions or what I learned about the individual. So maybe I should open with a joke or an inspirational quote or mention that it's gonna to rain today. <laughs> or just ask you if you slept better after you shared that you didn't sleep well at all last night. Tell me what you've learned about human machine interaction and our willingness to open up a bit about ourselves to a machine. Sure, so surprisingly, it turns out that as humans, even when we're fully aware that a digital entity is exactly that, essentially, it's not real, it's not a person, it is a machine. What we found is people, if done right, are not treating it as a device. And they're also not treating it as a person. They're fully aware of exactly what's happening uh, and her design kind of looking like a lamp lends to that as well. And what they end up doing, the way they describe the interaction with her is they call her an in-between machine, an entity, if you will, or a presence something that's clearly not alive, but clearly not an inanimate device either. And with that, they respond to the interaction. So they absolutely share with us or with LEQ how they're feeling and what their mood is and if they slept well and what they had for lunch and where they're going and how it was and what they're planning for tomorrow. Um, and that allows us to get the user, to get to know the user better and then suggest nudges and interactions to help them meet their goals. So it's very, very interesting. You'd really be surprised with how people are kind of building a real relationship with LEQ while fully understanding that it is a piece of technology and not a human being. Your strategy and how you're bringing this to market is, is really interesting. So tell us a, a bit about that because you're not asking people to give you $1,000 or $2,000 for an LEQ in their home right now. In fact, you're giving it to many people. So tell me about that. Correct. We are breaking new ground here. Um, <clears throat> nobody has built a digital companion that lives with people. <laughs> nobody has built a proactive device that seeks interaction and projects empathy. And definitely nobody has done that for the older population. So the real question that the industry and investors are asking about LEQ is basically, does it work? Do older adults want it? And is the interaction extremely high? And is it generating interactions that add value to the older adult and the wider ecosystem? So those are the questions we, we are seeking to answer. We've spent over 40,000 days of LEQ living in the home of older adults, but until recently, that was on a select group of people that kept on being rotated. What we understood that we need to do now is to actually show that that works in scale, that the engagement numbers are high and remain high, and the product has broad appeal because it is a brand new category. There's no, there's no comparison to anything else you can compare it to. Um, so we believe that that is the major effort that we need to de-risk and to answer for ourselves, do the algorithms still work on hundreds of users or a thousand users? Are we seeing the broad appeal when we don't hand select every user, but open it up to anyone that's interested? Um, so that won't go on forever. You know, we're not made, made of money, but it will go on for the next while until we meet our objective um, of the amount of users we're trying to recruit to this effort. Um, and using that step, we will learn the value of the product and announce how much we're going to charge for it going forward. It'll be a subscription kind of thing, or you haven't determined how you're going to do it yet? It, it really depends. It really depends if it'll be a combination of, of upfront and subscription or, or just one or the, or the other. And what about those who have qualified to receive the LEQ to this point? Yeah, we, we will not go back and charge them for that device. Um, we're, we're, 
the, there is a quid pro quo, by the way. The, what we're asking in return is for our customers to be available to our team for feedback um, and uh, tell us what's going on with the product. So we are contacting, contacting them often to understand what's going on and how we can improve. Um, and of course, they're, they're allowing us to use the data we generate to improve our models, um, not, to, not to give it to any third party, but to improve the quality of the product itself. Um, so we, we highly appreciate that and therefore are not going to charge for the device um, later on for people we provide it to. And of course, you're not forcing this on, on anyone, uh, but what do you say to people who wonder about the, the privacy aspects of this and what am I giving up in return to have something sitting there with, that is equipped with a camera and, and can hear you, that it's on all the time? Yeah, I mean, we just tell them the truth. <laughs> and the truth is, A, we've gone to exceptional leaps and bounds to secure the cybersecurity aspects of this product. Um, the product is as secure as you can make it with state-of-the-art controls that I won't get into to not give any advice to hackers, but it is very secure. The second aspect is what do we actually do with the data? So here we make a very firm commitment that the user is essentially in charge. So I am, if, for example, there is a doctor in the loop that would benefit from understanding that the user isn't feeling well, we only will share it with a doctor with the explicit permission of that customer towards their doctor. Um, we will not provide it to any third party. We will not sell that data uh, in any uh, personalized, personal identifiable form um, at all. And the product itself, like any piece of technology, right? I mean, our, my iPhone sees my face to unlock uh, my, my device so that I don't have to enter my passcode. I'm obviously giving up a little bit of privacy for value. Whenever I talk to Siri or Alexa, it hears what I'm saying and transcribes that. I obviously give up a little bit of privacy for value. Here too, LEQ needs to hear what the users are telling her in order to interact with them or see them in order to understand that you know, Fred is Fred and not somebody else in front of her. Um, but we use that as sensory information, if you will, to make sure we're doing a good job and not as a spying tool at all. Well, congratulations on the innovation. The website is leq, -E -L -L com. Doris Schooler, thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. <laughs>